everyone, Ryan O'Shea here with Future Grind. I was one of the first people invited to check out Uber's new self-driving cars, and I wanted to give you a little insight into what that experience was like, and also let you know the current state of the technology. Just to give you a little bit of background information, 18 months ago, Uber announced the creation of the Advanced Technology Center here in Pittsburgh, a joint venture with Carnegie Mellon University with the goal of getting self-driving cars on the road. Now, I've been seeing these cars being tested around the city for months now, but today is the official start of the program, meaning that today, when someone requests an Uber in Pittsburgh, they may be picked up by a self-driving car. I had the opportunity to get inside and behind the wheel of one of these cars yesterday, and I made a video about that experience for the local ABC television affiliate, which you can check out below. But here, I wanted to give you a little insight into what the experience was like, so you know what to expect the first time you get into one of these cars. My first impression was just how easy everything seemed. I used the Uber iPhone app to request a ride just as I always do, and I was notified that I was paired with a self-driving car. Seconds later, the autonomous Ford Fusion, which was bought stock off the lot before being altered, pulled up. Once I got in the car, everything was very smooth. Until I got used to what the sounds and dashboard lights meant, I had no idea when the car was self-driving or being manually operated by the safety driver but the vast majority of the time, it was self-driving. So I am here in the self-driving Uber. I'm actually gonna take it for a ride myself and see how it does. I hopefully don't have to do anything, but I'm here in the driver's seat just in case. As soon as I got behind the wheel of myself, it became hard to kick some of the habits that I'm used to as a human driver. Right when I started, you can see that I was in a wide lane, but the autonomous car prefers to stay close to the center yellow. As this large truck approached, I instinctively jerked to the right to give it space taking the car out of self-driving mode in the process. I'm sure that the car would have been fine if I let it do its thing, but trusting a computer to safely navigate you by a large truck at any speed is going to take some getting used to. Overall, this instance was indicative of the entire drive. Uber's self-driving car did perfectly fine, and I trust that it could have navigated the entire trip flawlessly, but there were some instances in which I took over just because there was a pedestrian, bicyclist, or other motorist that was disobeying traffic laws or making me nervous, as often happens in a city and I didn't want to take any chances with during my first time behind the wheel. The one situation in which the car did seem a bit awkward was at stop signs. It stopped without issue every time, but where humans are eager to go, the car uses an abundance of caution and can't yet react to human gestures such as waves. This led to some interesting stalemates, in which I had to manually take over just to keep the flow of traffic moving, as you can see in these examples. Should I just let it, should I go or should I let him just go? I'm gonna let, okay. let him go and I'll have you take the, take the turn and then we'll put it okay. back in. Yep, yeah, go ahead and manual. The car could have, could have handled that situation. I didn't want to bother the, the yeah. driver. I just thought, yeah, maybe it's best for us to just signal them forward and take control here. So these are the tricky situations, you know, tricky situations that maybe we'll have to deal with. Just trying to decide what to do right now. So go ahead and take the turn. Again, I'm sure the self-driving car could have handled these situations if given the opportunity, but sometimes impatient humans aren't accepting of caution. Inside the car itself are two tablet computers. One up front to show the route information to the safety driver, and one in the back seat for the passenger, which greeted me by name when I entered the car. This screen was interactive and had options to see route overview or frequently asked questions, but I most often kept it on a visualization of the car's roof-mounted LiDAR, which provided a 360-degree view of the road. It depicts the size, height, and direction of movement of every object we came across. This screen sometimes showed objects that I couldn't see simply by looking out the window, such as a van pulling up around the corner, or a little insight into what was going on on the other side of a barrier we drove along. Other information on the screen included speed, distance traveled, whether or not the brakes were activated, and if the car was in autonomous driving mode. One fun feature was a selfie option. Simply hit the camera button and you have three seconds to pose in your self-driving Uber. The picture that is captured is then sent to your phone. While I was told that route modification would not be possible during the initial trial period, I did see an option to request a stop. For those of you who want to know a bit more about the tech, I got a little insight from engineering lead Eric Mayhofer who pointed out the aforementioned LiDAR on the top, front, rear, and wings of the car, which offer 360 degree coverage. There's also a camera array featuring close and far field cameras, roof and trunk mounted antennas for GPS positioning, and more. 
The Uber staff that accompanied me on the trip was amazing, but it sounded like they were told that their standard answer to any question should be I don't know, which is completely understandable, but it's a little bit frustrating when I'm trying to figure out what the technology is capable of. Overall, the self-driving Uber really impressed me. The Pittsburgh streets we took the car on are notoriously difficult, with narrow lanes, cars parked everywhere, limited visibility, one-way streets, and railroad crossings. The car handled it all, and I never saw a time where it clearly made a mistake, and I certainly never felt like I was in any kind of danger. If humans had a bit more patience to let the car handle situations on its own, such as double parked cars or awkward stop signs, we may be able to achieve Uber's goal of creating safer roads for everyone. Unfortunately, humans often want to choose speed over caution. I'm excited that the pilot program is happening, and happening here in Pittsburgh. While it doesn't seem to be ready to take the streets without a safety driver just yet, that time is quickly coming, and you can help speed it up by taking a ride in one of these self-driving Ubers and letting them learn from your behavior. I'm really excited for the potential here. Speaking of the future, engineering lead Eric Mayhofer also gave me a sneak peek at their version 2 autonomous vehicle, a Volvo XC90. He compared the large and obvious roof unit on the Ford Fusion to a desktop computer, but said the version on the Volvo was much more like a laptop, sleeker and smaller, more efficient, and just as, if not more capable. He said that the integration on this vehicle was much tighter because of the strong relationship they have with Volvo. He left me with a little bit of a teaser, saying that next time I was there, he would show me the smartphone of driverless cars, which they are currently developing. So if you want to be among the first to know about versions 2 and 3 or any other technological advancements, please like and share this video and follow along so you don't miss out. This is Ryan O'Shea with Future Grind.